Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Jason White. This is Jason's Weird Reads. Thank you for joining me. If you're new here and you like reading horror books, please hit the subscribe button and, and comment and we'll discuss some books. And, uh, you know, I also like to talk about science fiction, fantasy, other things like that. So this video here is my top seven books to read. Actually, it's top six because one, I have not read, but I'm suggesting it anyway because I want to read it and... Uh, you know, that's how it goes. All right, so these are all Halloween-themed books and, and, and collections. Um, there's some that uh, have stories within that aren't necessarily Halloween-centric, but they do focus around fall or autumn. And, uh, you know, I, I really love all of these books. There's more, but uh, I didn't really want to get into it too much. And also... Um, I have a copy of one book that I really enjoy, but I can't find it anywhere. I think it's in storage downstairs in my basement. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look into that. I guess maybe for next year. I don't know. Uh, anyways, that's neither here nor there. Here we are to talk about these seven books, and so uh, these are my top six books, and plus a uh, a bonus book, which is the uh, the one I haven't read yet. So let's get into the books. Um, Number one here, I have Halloween Fiend by C.V. Hunt. Now you've probably heard people talking about this book quite a bit on uh, on BookTube since its release. I believe it was in 2019, and I read it when it came out, and it was a lot of fun. Um, so Halloween Fiend by C.V. Hunt is about uh, a small town called Strange, and it isn't the small quaint town it appears to be. It's haunted every night by a creature the townsfolk refer to as Halloween. Once the sun sets, each day Halloween emerges to collect its treats, a small live offering from each household. The residents comply because no one wants to be the target of Halloween's tricks. But the nightmare residing in Strange is nothing compared to the yearly ritual Halloween demands of its citizens on Halloween's Eve. So, or All Hallows Eve, sorry. So, yeah, this book is just a lot of fun. I, uh, I remember really enjoying my time in the town Strange. And if you really want the Halloween vibes, this story has it. Because it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's almost Halloween every day in Strange. And you know what, there's another collection down below where Halloween is every day. And I think you guys can probably guess which that one is. But we're going to hold off on that because I want to talk about Halloween House of Horrors. That's my number two spot, and this is by Mark Allen Gunnels. This is a collection of short stories. Mark Allen Gunnels is a very prolific writer. He writes a lot of short stories, and he has a lot of collections out there. So if you like short stories, I, I recommend checking him out regardless of his Halloween collections. He has two or three Halloween collections, and I've read this one. I don't think I've read the other ones, but this one is phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. Here is the synopsis for that. You're invited to a Halloween party. The wind is howling outside. Flames are roaring in the fireplace. And several people have gathered to tell you spooky and mournful tales for All Hallows' Eve. There's a little something for everyone. A teenager babysitting a bizarre and frightening child. A couple staying at an isolated house in the mountains stalked by something inhuman. A church's alternative to Halloween that provides something even more terrifying. A boy who wishes that every day was Halloween and lives to regret it. A seasonal prank that goes horribly awry. A child alone in a graveyard hoping to make a connection between the living and the dead. So come inside, sit back, don't even think about trying to leave. The doors are all bolted, and the windows locked, and you are trapped inside Mark Allen Gunnell's Halloween House of Horrors. Now, there's one thing I really like about uh, Mark Allen Gunnell's and uh, in his short stories, and I say this every time I talk about him and his work, especially his short stories, his collections, is he has stories that can be quite fierce and uh, cold-hearted, and then he'll have these really heartwarming tales that uh, that show the kindness of humanity 
and it, it, you know almost all those collections that I've read have that sort of uh, uh, you know juxtaposition and it and it's it's weird but it works and you know I kind of like coming across his heartwarming tales of, of you know human decency and caring because there's not enough of that in the world and you know when you're reading about people doing horrible things it's nice to come across something that's actually nice I said nice way too often there all right moving on to number three is the book I was uh, hinting to earlier and uh, that's this book right here Autumn Crow by our very own Cameron Cheney now I'm gonna read the synopsis here welcome to Autumn Crow, Autumn Crow a valley where every night is Halloween enjoy your stay but first a few words of warning stay out of the forest never venture out after dark and, and don't stare too long into the shadows you may not like what you see have a pleasant visit we hope it won't be your last author <laughs> author Cameron Cheney presents seven new tales of all hollows terror along with his new and revised novella there are monsters here in print for the very first time within here all right so uh, Autumn Crow uh, I read this last year I wasn't really feeling all Halloweeny very much at all and this was released I believe on the 16th and I had pre-ordered it and I read it once it came in the mail and uh, I really enjoyed it I can't remember if I actually pre-ordered it or not but I know I got it like shortly before Halloween and I read it and boom all the Halloween feelings were there so if you haven't checked out Autumn Crow yet and you want a really good Halloween read come here man you won't be disappointed all the stories in here are so much uh, they're fun they're sad uh, <laughs> and some of them are, are disturbing next up is a uh, another collection actually I think most of these are collections and that is Dead Leaves by Keelan Patrick Burke I read this a couple years ago and I really enjoyed it now here's the synopsis of what the stories inside hold. Oh, before I get into that, I just want to mention that this is one of the, uh, I think Autumn Crow too. Um, even though in Autumn Crow it's always Halloween, every day is like Halloween, uh, some of the stories don't even really mention Halloween, but most of them are Halloween-centric. In Dead Leaves, uh, there's no connection from my memory between the stories, and not all the stories are... Uh, take place during Halloween. I think there's only a couple that actually do. But all the stories, as typical with Keelan Patrick Burke, are written very beautifully and uh, make, they make you think. So here's the synopsis of some of the stories. Two brothers find themselves drawn to the only house in the neighborhood not direct decorated for Halloween. A man returns to his hometown to bury his overbearing mother and finds more memories awaiting him in the shadows of his childhood home. A young girl walks a lonely country road, recalling a rhyme that brings with it memories of death. A teenager hoping for romance gets more than he bargained for when the object of his desire introduces him to the object of hers. An aging millionaire wakes up buried in, cheap, in a cheap coffin with only a lamp and a bell for company. Those uh, being buried alive stories are just... Ugh, I cannot imagine having to live through or I can't imagine dying that way waking up in your in <laughs> buried in your coffin Ugh. the son of a woman accused of being a witch accepts the villagers peace offering at her funeral but all is not quite as it seems a woman with a violent past realizes that this year's Halloween party may be coming for her a lonely truck dri uh, a lonely truck driver a lonely trick-or-treater awakes in a house rumored be a place of death so that is uh, that is Keelan Patrick Burke's dead leaves and I remember just being completely immersed in this book and so moving on is my bonus book the book that I haven't read yet and that is this is Halloween by James A. Moore I'm gonna read to the synopsis here as I don't really have anything to say about it because I haven't read it Author James A. Moore offers up ten autumnal tales of the darker things that lurk just around the corner 
of Indian Summer. A man learns of a town's obsession with scarecrows and tries to find the answers as to why they are so important. Children move through family... Uh, Children move through familiar streets and find that Halloween makes everything different. Tis the season when ghosts are real, witches soar through the night, and things in the uh, Beldam woods are not always what they seem. Sometimes it's the monsters that wear the masks. That sounds pretty cool. Alright, and la uh, not lastly, number six here. Now this was pretty cool. I don't remember when they started doing this, but uh, <laughs> uh, Penguin Random House. Uh, a few years ago, they did a series of uh, like mini anthologies, and they're called Halloween Carnival, and they range from volumes one to five. And there's so many, uh, so many little treats in here. I believe I've talked about these uh, these books before, and I don't think they're available. As physical books I think you can only read them as e-copies and as I said there's five of these uh, little mini anthologies and they all have about five to six authors this uh, ser little series I call it little series because they're like little miniature books <laughs> that uh, that you can read all at the uh, all separately or you can read them all together I don't know why they didn't bother just mashing them all together into one big anthology but you know, it's kind of fun going through each little one. You might find some where you don't have any interest in the authors at all, and some where you're interested in every single author that's in there. So that's good. But uh, you have stories by Keelan Patrick Burke, uh, Ray Garten, Al Sarantino, or Saratonio, uh, Robert McCammon, Kevin Lucia, Lisa Morton, Mark Allen Gunnels, Peter Straub, Richard Chismar and many many others so definitely give those a look uh, they're pretty cheap too I think they're like two bucks each three bucks uh, on the Kindle store so go check that out and finally I, I did a review of this one as well and if I remember I'll put the link up uh, you know up there and that is Mr. Jack by Chris Kosserich so here is the, uh, the synopsis for this on Halloween night Three teenagers pay a visit to the old woman who lives alone in her ramshackle little house in the woods with dozens of cats. The trio had planned on an all Hallow's Eve prank before heading to a party. The town of Summerdale has a dark past and uh, Josie Howard knows the true story of Mr. Jack. And when she's done telling her chilling tale of blood and madness, their lives will be forever changed. I, I believe that Chris Kosserich has uh, expanded on this world, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out, and I'll put the information down there in the comments. But definitely check out this book. It's very short. It's I think like it's less than a hundred pages. I'm certain of that, and it's a lot of fun. It's very much uh, it'll give you the Halloween feels too. I believe I read it either last year or the year before. Okay, so that is it for my Halloween book recommendations for 2020. What a year it's been. <laughs> All right, so uh, speaking of it being a crazy year, keep being safe out there and keep being creative. And I will catch you guys in the next bookish video.